Good afternoon, everyone. A uh, hearty welcome to each and every one of you in this uh, short formal program hosted by the Department of Psychology. And I, Hilo Zusem, will be the chairperson uh, for this webinar. And without much further delay, uh, let me highlight the order of program. <clears throat> welcome addressed by Dr. Nozini No PCA, Assistant Professor of Psychology Department, followed by guest speaker, Deton, uh, Mem Dithiano Nakro, <clears throat> State Commissioner for Persons with Disabilities, NAL and PWDs. And lastly, <clears throat> vote of thanks by Atili, BA, BS, BA Psychology, second semester. And now, uh, without further delaying, I would like to uh, give the time to Dr. Nozinino PCA for welcome address. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Holly, sir. A very warm welcome and a very good afternoon to you all. I am happy to greet and welcome you all here at the Embrace Your Differences online event uh, with our distinguished guests in our midst. Uh, with our distinguished guests in our midst, uh, Ma'am Dutano Nakro, who is also as mentioned by Kibizu, is the current state commissioner person with disabilities, Nagaland. Ma'am, I, on behalf of the Tetro family and the uh, psychology department in particular, welcome and thank you for uh, agreeing to be part of the event in spite of your busy schedule. Ma'am Chitono recognized that as government wasn't doing uh, what it is needed to do for the people with disabilities, and hence men also knew that uh, we needed to remove any obstacles and to ensure that the people with disabilities could experience the sense of being approved and being uh, recognized. So uh, man, as we, Madam has worked so far, uh, has toiled so hard for the recognition of the person living with disabilities and uh, she has also been a recipient of the, the Lemon Tree Helen Keller Award in 2015. Also, Shilnam was awarded the Classic Award in 2019 in recognition of her work to empower persons with disabilities. And also, last year, in 2015, she was awarded the uh, A. Kevichasa Citizenship Award. And to add a few feathers to Ma'am Ditono Nakro, whom uh, most of you, you might not be aware of, she is the founder and the previous principal of my school, whom I am proud to be uh, to be a part of the family, uh, the Alderville School Higher Secondary, which is uh, situated and located in Kohima, uh, in Josama in particular. Ma'am, I'm happy and uh, I once again welcome you to our event here in this online event. And to all the participants who are here, I know, I know that uh, this event is going to be a really exciting and hopefully a really productive webinar event this afternoon. And also, uh, it is great to be here and to have an afternoon to learn and also a day uh, which we all look forward to in the future. Uh, Ma'am, uh, we look forward to your presentations and your guidance and also the, uh, the, the topics of which you will be brainstorming with us, uh, which is the need of the art and in what area we need to do, as well as to keep the momentum going. Thank you all and uh, thank you all for joining. Over to you, Pyolizu. Thank you, Miss. Um, <clears throat> Okay, uh, so now I give the time to our guest speaker, it is Ma'am Ditono Nakro. Uh, you may kindly take your time. Thank you very much. Um, hello, everyone. Good afternoon. And um, uh, thank you, Dr. Pese, for the very generous uh, introduction. And we, as you said, you are family 
of the Oldsville family and the you know we are all very proud of our uh, you know of our students uh, doing so well in life so thank you very much i'm really happy to be joining you all today i hope you can hear me all of you yes we are audible okay um so uh, yeah i'm really happy to be joining you all today and i thank the um uh, psychology department team for organizing this uh, program. Uh, it is really important to have a lot more of these uh, conversations on uh, disability uh, because uh, there is still a lot of, um, you know, misunderstanding, a lot of misconceptions, you know, about disability, though, uh, you know, uh, Nowadays, um, uh, there is much more awareness, but still, there is still a lot of misconceptions, as I said. And uh, in many ways, you know, uh, it's kind of uh, treated, disability is still treated as if it is uh, kind of a taboo uh, subject, you know, something that should not be talked about openly or uh, discussed too much about or something like that. And then in many cases, some families uh, still don't even want to talk about their, uh, you know, mm, disabled children as if it is something shameful, you know, and I totally understand their feelings, you know, because historically, you know, through the ages, it's not only about uh, Nagaland, it's only about, not about uh, uh, our society, but uh, through the ages all over the world, you know, disability is something that has been looked upon as uh, something wrong, as if it is uh, something um, shameful, something to be uh, shameful about, you know, something wrong, abnormal. So talking, we really need to break this chain, you know, break uh, this kind of uh, smash, this kind of mindset. And the only way that we can do is uh, talk about it, discuss about it openly, educate one another. You know, it is only then that this kind of mindset will be, uh, you know, we will be able to do away with this kind of uh, mindset. and. Uh, so uh, that's why the theme of uh, the program today is also so appropriate, um, embracing and celebrating differences. Uh, we are each unique and amazing, and the collective and the collective human experience is richer for all the difference that all of us, each and every one of us, bring. Just imagine, uh, you know, if all of us are the same, if all of us are similar then uh, how monotonous, how boring life would be. So, um, and uh, please, if I go on to, I tend to talk too much sometimes. So if I go on too long, then please warn me as we go along. Uh, so um, let's just start with the basics. Um, okay, let me give my, uh, open up my presentation. Oh dear. Okay, so uh, can it be seen? Yes, ma'am. Okay, okay, so let's, uh, as I said, let's start with the basics. Um, so who are persons with uh, disabilities? Uh, as per UNCRPD, that is the United Nations Convention of on the Rights of Persons with Disabilities, that is the universal document on the rights of persons with disabilities, and the Rights of uh, Persons with Disabilities Act 2016. This is the legislation of our uh, country. So uh, persons with disabilities means persons who have long-term physical, mental, intellectual, or sensory impairments. So um, then what is disability? There is no single definition of disability because it's complex, dynamic, multidimensional, and contested. Now, the UNCRPD, that is the United Nations uh, document, 
recognizes that disability is an evolving concept in the sense that uh, we cannot just put a definition and say that, okay, this is disability, because disability is something that is evolving all the time, changing, you know, so it is an evolving concept. And most importantly, the UNCRPD, it recognizes that disability results from the interaction between persons with impairments and attitudinal uh, environmental barriers that hinders their full and effective participation in society on an equal basis with others. This means that, uh, <clears throat> you know, a person is not disabled because of the impairment that he or she has, you know. For example, I use a wheelchair, I'm a wheelchair user because I cannot walk. But that impairment that I have, is, does not disable me. It is my environment because the environment is inaccessible, you know, and then, uh, you know, wherever I go, it's full of steps. There are no ramps, there are no uh, lifts or anything like that. And then, um, uh, you know, the attitudes of the people, it's full of negativity in the sense there are so much, there is so much, uh, you know, negative uh, uh, attitudes towards disability, you know, so all these kinds of things, it disables me. It's not my impairment, but it's the, um, you know, all these, my surroundings, my environment and the attitudes of people around me that disables me. So this is an important um, point to remember. Now, there are a number, uh, a lot of uh, you, uh, various kinds of uh, disabilities, and many times we, uh, you know, we uh, are not aware of the different categories of disabilities. So I'll just go uh, quickly go through the disabilities. These are the disabilities that has been specified in the schedule of the rights of persons with disabilities at 2016. That is the disability act of our country. These are the uh, disabilities that are specified and they can be broadly grouped into five categories. Uh, physical disability, intellectual disability, mental illness, disability due to chronic, uh, chronic uh, medical conditions and multiple disabilities. So we'll just uh, go to briefly through the five categories. Now, physical disability, it includes a locomotor disability, visual impairment, hearing impairment, speech and language impairment. So now, now, what is locomotor, locomotor disability? Locomotor disability means restriction in the movement of the limbs. You know, uh, someone like me, I have locomotor disability because uh, my upper limbs and my lower limbs are both affected. I also was not born with a disability. I met with an accident and my spinal cord was injured. I um, became a, a, a quadriplegic. That means both my upper limbs and my lower limbs are uh, affected. So locomotor difficulty means uh, difficulty in using the legs and hands for movement and other activities in their daily activities. Now, locomotor disability can be caused by medical, some kinds of medical conditions, uh, illnesses or injuries. You know, examples, uh, some examples are polio. I think uh, most of us have heard about this, uh, polio, cerebral palsy, amputation, then uh, uh, spinal cord injury like me, then injury to the head, soft tissues, muscular dystrophy, dwarfism, uh, uh, leprosy cured, etc. So these are just some uh, of the uh, some some conditions or injuries that can cause locomotor disability. Now let's just take a closer. Um, okay, so these are just images of uh, you know people with uh, disability, uh, locomotor disability, and the uh, assistive uh, dis uh, devices. You know, like wheelchairs uh, and walkers or crutches, walking sticks. Or these days, the technology it has come up with so many things that can assist people with disabilities. So um, uh, you know to help them. Uh, move around uh, and do their work, you know. So these are some of the assistive devices that uh, people with locomotor disabilities, they use. I use a wheelchair. So now let's just take a closer look at two conditions, you know, leprosy cured persons. Uh, many people, they don't realize that uh, leprosy cured uh, people uh, come under disab uh, disab the list of disabilities. 
a leprosy cured person means a person who has been cured of leprosy but is suffering from loss of sensation in the hands or feet with limits to their uh, which limits their activity vision problems uh, physical deformity which affects their functioning and causes stigma and discrimination so we have all heard about leprosy and uh, you know since those uh, biblical times you know leprosy is a medical uh, illness you know that has been um, made you know uh, it, it has been made uh, to you know really uh, it's a stigmatized uh, you know condition where people who have had this illness you know they are kind of shunned from society kept away from uh, the general public in uh, olden days in the uh, you know a few just a few years back also we used to have all these leprosy colonies and all nowadays leprosy colonies have though it's still in existence leprosy colonies have become Ill, uh, illegal you know because um, uh, it, causes a lot of stigma and discrimination and so because they you know they have a lot of these uh, uh, effects from the illness as well as stigma and discrimination so they have been added into the disability uh, list in our disability the act then dwarf with genetic condition resulting in short stature and other medical conditions people with any short height and other physical characteristics peculiar to, uh, peculiar to them so uh, we though we are familiar with uh, you know people who have dwarfism we don't realize all the problems that they face you know it's not just their short stature but then they uh, you know the actions that uh, they that really uh, creates a lot of problem in their you know daily lives and uh, face a lot of uh, you know uh, they become the butt of so many people's jokes and uh, they face a lot of uh, social stigma and discrimination and things like that. So the uh, dwarfism also has been added um, uh, into the list of uh, disabilities, specified disabilities. Then the other two uh, um, impairments uh, under the physical disabilities, visual impairment, hearing impairment, these two are more easily understandable. Blindness, blindness, we have total absence of sight, low vision, have some sight, but vision is poor and it affects their day-to-day -day functioning. Hearing impairment, death is uh, people who count in both ears, hard of hearing, persons who can hear some sound, but not good enough, it, and it affects their day-to-day -day functioning. Um, then uh, we have, uh, this also comes under uh, physical disability, speech and language uh, disability. Now, a speech impairment is characterized by difficulty in uh, articulation of words. Uh, you know, a difficulty in bringing out the words and speaking, you know, uh, example, an example is stuttering. Uh, you know, we've we've all, I'm sure, have had uh, interacted with uh, people, or some of you all may have this also, uh, this uh, difficulty in speaking, stuttering. So this is that is called a speech impairment. The language impairment is the specific impairment. You know, in the difficulty in understanding and um, processing the words that are being said you know some people have this uh, problem so this it's not the, the difficulty in speaking but the difficulty in making sense of the words that are being said so this is called a language impairment so an individual can have one a speech impairment or a language impairment or they can have both uh, also then uh, these impairments or disorders are identified, can be assessed and identified by a speech and language uh, pathologist. Now, uh, the next uh, category of disability is intellectual disability. It actually comes under developmental disabilities. And uh, two specific conditions have been mentioned in our Disability Act, that is specific learning disabilities and autism spectrum disabilities. Now, intellectual and development, uh, developmental disabilities, that is, uh, in short, it's called IDDs, are disorders that are usually present at birth and that negatively affect the trajectory of the individual's physical, intellectual and, and or emotional development. Many of these conditions affect multiple body parts or systems. Uh, you know, it is usually there, these kinds of disabilities, uh, you know, are usually there at birth and as they grow and uh, develop, you know, it 
tends to affect their development, physical, intellectual, and or emotional. Then um, IDD may uh, mean difficulty in communicating, learning, and retaining information. Uh, so people with intellectual and developmental disability may process information more slowly, you know, uh, in understanding and processing information may be slower for them. They may find uh, communication difficult and uh, uh, also have difficulty in, uh, you know, uh, daily living skills, you know, the things that we do daily, you know, to look after ourselves, the hygiene, personal hygiene, or uh, socializing with people, all those thing, kind of things may be difficult for them, you know, or safety issues, you know, they may not know, uh, be able to understand threats or safety issues, you know, so that's why uh, people with, uh, you know, intellectual and developmental disabilities uh, many times are victims of abuse, you know, girls and women in particular, you know, when they have intellectual and developmental disabilities, they face a lot of, uh, uh, they go through uh, sexual abuse and that kind of thing, you know, because they have difficulty in, uh, you know, uh, understanding that a situation may be dangerous for them or uh, that something is right or wrong. They don't understand things, uh, understand these, they have difficulty in understanding these things, you know, and so uh, unscrupulous people, they take advantage of uh, people with uh, in, uh, intellectual and develop, uh, tend to take uh, advantage of people with intellectual and uh, developmental disabilities. Now, some types of uh, IDDs are learning disabilities, autism spectrum disorder, as I've already mentioned, then attention deficit, hyperactivity disorder, ADHD, bipolar disorder, Down syndrome, fragile X syndrome, uh, traumatic brain injury, fetal alcohol spectrum disorder, FASD. See, these are just some examples. There are a lot more, uh, many more conditions that come under IDD. And... Um, just a little bit on learning disabilities. I think uh, you all have heard about this uh, uh, learning disability. So nowadays uh, we talk a lot about learning disabilities. Now, learning disabilities are due to genetic and or neurobiological factors. It alters the brain functioning in a manner which affects one or more cognitive processes related to, related to learning. Now, uh, these processing uh, problems can interfere with learning basic skills such as reading, writing, and or math. Uh, they can also interfere with higher level skills such as organization time, planning, abstract reasoning, uh, short-term memory, long or short-term memory, and attention. Now, mm, we talk about learning uh, disabilities only in the set because learning obviously has to do with uh, you know education schools colleges so we tend to talk only about uh, you know um, in the setting in terms of uh, academics but it is important to realize you know that learning disabilities uh, can affect an individual's life beyond academics you know it impact it can impact relationships uh, with family friends and in the workplace so a learning disability cannot be cured or fixed it is a lifelong challenge however with uh, you know appropriate support intervention therapy you know people with learning disabilities can achieve you know can cope and can achieve success in school and they can do very well in fact not uh, not they can achieve they can do a lot you know if but they need to have proper support and intervention you know these uh, learning uh, for disabilities like mine you know locomotor disability i can't walk i can't use my hands properly and so uh, it is quite visible it is quite obvious that i have a disability but uh, you know these uh, most intellectual and developmental disabilities such as learning disabilities are you know uh, usually called invisible disabilities because they can't be seen obviously and so because of that many people uh, you know they remain uh, undiagnosed also because they they don't understand what's wrong with them. Their families don't understand what's wrong with them. You know, children, many children in schools also because of this, they really suffer. They may have actually have a learning disability, but teachers, uh, because we really don't, the sensitization is so poor. 
uh, there is no training in all these things, you know. So many children, they may be really having a very difficult time, but uh, they just suffer through all that. They'll get punishments, they'll get uh, humiliated and, uh, you know, that kind of thing. And then they never get treated also. So it is good to be aware of this thing so that you can to have some basic knowledge that you can even help some people who may be going through difficulties without realizing, you know, so it is always good to know as much as possible about um, these kinds of uh, uh, issues that people may be facing. You know, some types of learning disabilities are dyscalculia, a specific learning disability that affects a person's ability to understand numbers and learn math facts. Then dysgraphia is a specific learning disability that affects a person's handwriting ability and fine motor skills. They find it very difficult to write. Then dyslexia is a specific learning disability that affects uh, affects uh, reading and related language-based processing skills. It's very difficult. They cannot understand written words, you know, to read. So these are just, uh, there are more, uh, a few more, but uh, these are some of the specific uh, learning um, disabilities. Then uh, we go to the third category, this is mental illness. Now, mental illness, uh, also called mental health disorders, it refers to a wide range of mental health conditions, disorders that affect your mood, thinking and behavior. You know, some examples of mental illness include uh, depression, uh, anxiety disorders, schizophrenia, eating disorders and uh, other addictive behaviors. You know, all of us, everyone, you know, we all time to time we go through some uh, mental health concerns we go through some uh, short periods of not feeling good and feeling depressed and all that's normal with everybody but a mental health concern it becomes a mental illness when the signs and sim symptoms you know it becomes very regular it becomes frequent uh, the stress becomes very frequent and then uh, and starts affecting your daily life, you know, the, your ability to function every day, to do your work, if you are a student, to be a student, you know, to do, to go to your, uh, you know, classes and uh, do your uh, classwork and things like that. Then it becomes a, a, a real concern, you know, a mental illness. And that is a time when you should immediately um, seek um, a professional help. And, um, and then number four, the fourth category is disability due to chronic medical conditions. And this uh, category includes chronic neurological conditions such as uh, multiple sclerosis, Parkinson's disease. These are two neurological conditions. And then there are also chronic medical uh, conditions, uh, you know, uh, like blood disorders, like hemophilia, thalassemia, and sickle cell disease. So these are also some of the chronic medical conditions that come under the list of uh, disabilities in our uh, Disability Act. Then um, the fifth one and the last category is multiple disabilities. Uh, you know, as the name suggests, this means that uh, a combination co combination of more than one of the, you know, the, the above specified disability, the disabilities that we have already discussed, you know, it, it is a combination of two or more, you know, it may be, uh, you know, example, deaf blindness, which means a, con a condition in which a person may have combination of hearing and visual impairments causing severe communication, developmental and educational problems. You can just imagine if someone is blind as well as deaf, you know, the, the difficulties, you know, to communicate and, uh, you know, the developmental uh, trajectory, everything will be affected, impacted uh, very severely. So, as I said, uh, multiple disabilities can be a combination of um, mm, two or more of the specified disabilities that uh, we have uh, discussed. Now, you will also, you know, in our Disability Act, when we talk about disabilities, you will also come across a term called benchmark disabilities. Now, um, who is a person with benchmark disabilities? A person who has been certified by the appropriate certifying authority, that is by the medical, you know, doctors, the medical professionals, with 40% or more of any of the specified disabilities that we have already discussed. So under our Disability Act, uh, 
a person with 40% or more is a person with benchmark disability. For me, uh, I am 90% because um, both my hands, as I already said, my upper limbs, my lower limbs are affected. So I'm 90%. And so the thing, uh, why this benchmark, the term benchmark disabilities uh, is important is because uh, some of the disability benefits that are uh, stipulated under our Disability Act, the RPWD Act uh, 2016, uh, can be availed only by a person with benchmark disabilities, only a, by a person with 40% or above. You know, one of these uh, uh, benefits is the 4% job reservation so um, so that uh, yeah so i just wanted you to be aware about this uh, term benchmark disabilities so now let's go to the let's uh, i've already mentioned the rights of persons with disabilities act 2016 is the legislation that uh, the disability legislation of our country so just let's just discuss this in brief now this is the legislation that uh, promotes and protects the rights and uh, dignity of people with disabilities in various aspects of life, you know, educational, social, legal, economic, cultural, and uh, political, you know, it applies to government as well as non-government and private organizations. It has, uh, you know, there are a number of provisions over there, which, uh, you know, and a number of committees and bodies that needs to be set up in order to monitor the proper implementation of the rights of uh, you know um, uh, uh, the the various laws and things like that my office the office of the state commissioner is also set up under this uh, this act uh, it also has penalties you know in case uh, anyone violates these rules these laws or anyone uh, you know, abuses a person with disability and deprives a person with disability of his or her rights, you know, so um, that um, uh, the right of uh, persons with this, that's the rights of persons with disabilities act 2016. Now, the rights, uh, this act was passed by both houses of parliament on 16 December 2016. The act became operational on 19 April 2017. Uh, now earlier before this there was one another act it was uh, it came into being in 1995 it was called persons with disabilities equal opportunities protection of rights and full participation act uh, 1995 so now this um, this new act was passed in 2016 it it is a much more robust act you know and so it was passed and it replaced this old act of 1995 now the new act this 2016 act was passed to fulfill india's obligation to the united nations convention on the rights of persons with disabilities which india ratified in 2007 so now um, that's the uh, you know in very brief uh, that's the rights of persons with disabilities act now the status of implementation of the act in nagaland uh you know it's actually i have to be really honest i have to be brutally honest about this disability is a sector that has been badly badly neglected in our state for many many years that's the truth we cannot deny it we cannot cover it up or you know anything like that it has been uh, it's uh, very badly neglected as i said you know so like everything in uh, in the disability sector this uh, implementation of this act also was uh, badly delayed you know it was as i already mentioned uh, it was uh, it became operational in april 2017 uh, and then within six months you know all the states were supposed to start taking action uh, notify the state rules and things like that but all those were not done for a number uh, of months uh, for uh, you know at least a couple of years and nothing was done and uh, but uh, uh, implementation has uh, picked up pace in the last couple of uh, years. So that is the good news. You know, um, we have a lot more cooperation and we are pushing ahead to make sure that the laws are strictly implemented with uh, 
and people with disabilities are given their due as equal citizens of the state. Now, uh, some of the important uh, you know, provisions that have been uh, notified are, as I've already mentioned, 4% job reservation for persons with disabilities. That has been notified, and we are very you know, strictly implementing this and uh, uh, pulling up uh, you know, departments and uh, agencies, different authorities who do not comply with this uh, uh, provision. Then uh, special prosecutors and special courts have been set up. These special prosecutors and special courts are uh, uh, meant to fast track you know, cases uh, uh, involving persons with disabilities. So that is a good thing. Then Department of uh, School Education has notified Section 16 and 31 of the RPWD Act. That is, the, these sections have to do with the inclusive education. And so they have already notified it. Of course, because education has been so poor all these years, you know, um, education for disabled children. So we have, uh, though it has been notified, a lot of work needs to be done. We are working with the uh, school education so that we can put everything, uh, you know, in place properly and uh, inclusive education can become, um, can, uh, you know, start uh, all the schools, whether, because it covers both uh, uh, private as well as um, um, government schools and colleges, all the educational institutions, so that it can start, you know, all these uh, inclusive education become the norm. So we are working closely with the school education to, uh, so that all these things can start moving forward robustly. Then the accessibility of the built environment, transport and information technology and communication, all these things are being taken up strongly. Obviously, if there is no accessibility, and you know all of us, we have seen our surroundings, there's absolutely uh, no accessibility in the built environment for people like us who use wheelchairs, who, can, who have difficulty mobility issues. It's terrible. We cannot go anywhere. So accessibility of the built environment, then accessibility of the public transport and, you know, information technology and communication websites need to be made, uh, you know, uh, accessible. The, uh, the, the uh, you know, the matters being uh, uploaded, photographs being uploaded should be made accessible. All these things, there is still very little awareness about these things. So we are uh, creating as uh, trying to create as much uh, awareness and possible and taking up all these things as seriously as possible then uh, of course setting up of rehabilitation and other disability resource centers you know implementation of all these uh, provisions of the rpwd act is an utmost priority we need to do that and that's what we are pushing uh, towards um, and uh, yeah so Okay, so so that being said, that uh, you know about the status of implementation, it has started. Uh, you know now implementation is taking place. Uh, you know at a better pace, which is a good thing. Uh, but uh, the progress, you know, despite the uh, you know we are making progress, as I said, but looking at the current disability scenario in Nagaland. You know, it doesn't give me much ple pleasure to say this, but we are, it's, uh, you know, we are in very, very poor shape, you know, because as I've already mentioned, uh, disability sector was, uh, disability is a sector that has been so badly, uh, you know, neglected for many years that, yes, progress is being made and that is very good, but, uh, uh, because it has been so bad for so many years that uh, the situation, the scenario is still very, very poor in our state, you know. And there's plenty of blame to go around for this, you know, in this regard. Why was uh, attention not given? Why was it neglected so badly, you know? Uh, but it's not about one government, it's this government or that uh, government. It's not even that. It's not about one department or one official but it's actually about the entire society, you know, our society. It's a, it's a collective failure of our uh, society that nothing that uh, disability sector, the disability community was basically forgotten and uh, ignored for so many, many years. Uh, but as I said, I'm happy to report that um, 
things are improving changes are happening it's slow but uh, it is taking place and the uh, good thing is that the government of the day is uh, responsive and ready to work with us uh, you know support us and work with us then the department officials in charge of the disability sector are also proactive and uh, cooperative and i think over and above all this, the most important is that uh, the disability movement in our state, you know, earlier days, we barely had any disability movement, but now the disability movement has become uh, is growing stronger every day. It has become quite strong now with many young people with disabilities, you know, people with disabilities themselves coming out standing up and speaking up for themselves you know um, uh, pressing the government for policy changes and things like that and this is so important the actual st uh, stakeholders you know they have to be there their voices have to be heard you know nothing about us without us that is the motto of the disability uh, uh, you know movement worldwide so Unless a person with disability is there at the table, you know, speaking up and talking about our own needs, you know, how can a non-disabled person fully understand? Yes, non-disabled people also, we need them to support us, to be there for us and work with us. But then a non-disabled person cannot speak for a disabled person. You know, they will never know the actual problems that are faced by a person with disability. So. Uh, you know, the disability, this is a, a very important, uh, I think, aspect that the disability movement is in our state is growing stronger by the day. But uh, as I said, um, there was uh, huge neglect for so long that uh, though uh, changes are indeed happening, uh, the scenario is still uh, quite poor. So very poor, not quite poor, very poor. So people with disabilities in Nagaland, uh, you know, basically they lack access to quality health services, lack access to disability support services, educational services. They lack opportunity to livelihood and economic empowerment, excluded from participation in society due to environmental and attitudinal uh, barriers. You know, uh, let's see, all these things are that that is really this is the true scenario though changes are happening this is still the scenario that we live in for you know persons with disability there is uh, we don't have we have very few medical professionals who are actually trained in the disability uh, sector and uh, you know and there is uh, very little sensitization uh, among uh, health uh, professionals and then of course there are accessible accessible issues in hospitals and clinics and you know health centers and things like that then uh, we absolutely have no uh, rehabilitation or support disability support services in our state this is because of the neglect of uh, you know that went on for so many years rehabilitation is something so so important in disability you know and without disability it is impossible for people with disabilities you know to lead uh, you know it becomes quite uh, difficult for them to lead a productive life so rehabilitation is so important but we just don't have any proper centers you know there are a few private organizations and all who have started uh, who have been there is uh, for several years some and some who are starting now and providing services and all but we really uh, you know nobody bothered to get all these things set up the things that are even being provided by the center so we just don't have any of these services you know so people who can afford it they go out of the state to get you know the uh, you know therapy or the services that they need but there are the majority obviously cannot go out of the state to do that so so many people with disabilities they just uh, you know Mm, suffer in silence some most people don't even know that they need this kinds of uh, rehabilitation you know that that is the saddest thing you know and then in education of course as, as i've said we are in uh, you know it it is a really sad state of affairs uh, majority of children with disabilities they cannot attend school or continue to higher service uh, higher studies even if they attend primary school you know they cannot go on to higher studies and many of our children with disabilities in this current scenario, they will never, never, you know, probably never even enter a, enter a classroom. 
And it's not because they don't want education <coughs> or they, <coughs> excuse me, or it's not because they don't want to go to school, but because there are so many barriers that they just cannot overcome because nobody thinks about them. You know, the school buildings, classrooms are inaccessible. Uh, the compounds are inaccessible. There are no accessible toilets that they can use. You know, these kinds of uh, <clears throat> issues are there. And uh, so how can a person using, uh, you know, with mobility difficulties go to a classroom and uh, sit with others? Then uh, the curriculum is not geared to uh, to their needs, you know, curriculum, uh, like, for example, uh, a student who is blind will uh, need Braille textbooks or, uh, you know, audio textbooks, you know, those are supposed to be provided for them. All these are supposed to be given, but we are not giving. Then uh, we need trained teachers. We have such a huge lack of trained teachers, you know, trained teachers who are trained to take care and support, uh, you know, uh, children with disabilities, give uh, it and give them the appropriate kind of education. Then, uh, of course, uh, as I said, a lack of proper support system and a lot of negative attitudes, you know, and stereotyping of uh, children, people with disabilities. They go to school and then they, you know, have face a lot of bullying and things like that. So, see, there are so many barriers they face and they just don't get an education. That is the scenario, scenario there is. Then, of course, livelihood, people with disabilities, they face a lot Lot of, they, they have no access to labor and they face a lot of discrimination while seeking employment and income generating activities. Adults with disabilities, I mean, you just think about your own, uh, you know, about your own community. You know, the everyday activities that communities carry out, meetings, gatherings, or just the everyday living, uh, you know, activities that you do, weddings or church. How many disabled people do you see? You know, in all these things, not much, I'm sure, not many. And uh, it's because there is just no accessibility. Nobody thinks about people with disabilities and that they would want to be participating in all these also. You know, it's like as if people with disabilities <clears throat> don't matter. They exist, but then it's okay. They don't, they don't need to do all these things. They don't need to socialize. They don't need to have, a, you know, a, a, any kind of life. You know, it's that... Um, kind of situation. So, as I said, progress is being made, but we still, uh, you know, have a long, long way to go. But uh, the positive thing is that, uh, as I have been saying again and again, uh, a start is being made and it. Uh, we really need to, all of us need to come collectively, you know, get together collectively to make sure that all these things are removed and, uh, you know, our state also becomes an inclusive state, a state that includes all its citizens, um, whether they are disabled, non-disabled, or whatever. So then, okay, let me just say a little bit about the career path in disability sector for psychology students. Uh, you know, this uh, I will not be talking about anything very, uh, you know, out of uh, um, uh, something that uh, things that you all have. I'm sure this will just be uh, career paths that you'll talk about quite often. Uh, but um, just a few, I will uh, just a couple or so, uh, I will just highlight. I've already mentioned about the lack of uh, trained teachers and trained professionals. You know, this is such a huge, huge problem that we are facing. Because, and this is all about the neglect. Again, it just comes down to that. Now, there was so much neglect that, neglect that our, our people, you know, our young people who are going for further studies and, you know, different, uh, uh, taking up different career paths and things like, nobody was encouraged. Nobody thought that, you know, this kind of uh, trainings and uh, uh, in the disability sector was any kind of viable uh, employment uh, or, uh, you know, uh, employ a viable career path, you know, so very few people, for instance, see uh, uh, sign language interpreters all over the uh, state, we have just two two sign language trained sign language interpreters imagine that and now the law is that in all the meetings all the public events everything we are supposed to use sign language interpreters this is for 
uh, you know, uh, deaf people who cannot uh, hear. So sign language is a legitimate, it is a legal, legal language. And all of us, actually all of us, whether we are deaf or not deaf, we should learn sign language so that we can communicate easily with uh, uh, you know, deaf people also. So in any case, uh, this uh, sign language interpreters have become um, you know, compulsory now, mandatory, but then we just don't have enough. Imagine we only have two trained uh, sign language interpreters. How are they supposed to be everywhere in the state, all over, you know, in every event and every program? So that is the kind of problem that we are facing. We want to do a program. We want to start something. We just don't have the trained, uh, you know, trained people who are trained in the, uh, you know, disability sector. So that is one huge problem that we are facing now. So... For psychology students, you know, uh, there are many, many career avenues. Um, uh, one is, uh, of course, a clinical psychologist. Uh, this, I don't have to explain to you all. I'm sure you all talk about this a lot. It is a broad branch of psychology that focuses on diagnosing and treating mental, emotional and behavioral uh, disorders. Some of the more common disorders that might be treated include, uh, you know, learning disabilities, behavioral uh, disorders like ADHD, substance abuse, depression, anxiety, other mental health disorders, eating disorders, and so on. Uh, you know, some clinical psychologists uh, work with a wide variety of poly, uh, populations, while some others will train specifically for some groups, you know, as children or the elderly or women or those with, uh, you know, people with specific disorders, they'll train for those kinds of, uh, you know, for specific disorders. Then these professionals, they'll typically work in hospital settings, mental health clinics or private practices. Um, then... Um, we have counselors. This also is something that uh, need not be explained so much. You all know about it. Counselors help people deal with various issues in their life and to come to better terms with their lives and experiences through exploration of feelings and emotions. Counseling is uh, often a form of talking therapy that and can encompass uh, areas including health, rehabilitation, education, mental health, et cetera. Counselors are very much needed in uh, the disability sector. You know, uh, in our context, Naga context, uh, counseling, uh, we have never, you know, earlier times, we had never given uh, much importance to counseling, never thought that counseling was important, you know, is important, but uh, this need is being very much, you know, felt very much in today's world, in today's times and uh, opportunities are only bound to increase, you know, in schools and colleges, hospitals and clinics, homes and uh, organizations that work with different groups of people, you know, like uh, including disabled people and so on. So uh, counseling, counselors uh, is a good way to move. Then the third one that I just wanted to highlight was special is special education teacher. You know, this is slightly outside uh, of a traditional psychology career, but uh, the field of education, it offers a great deal of opportunity for those who enjoy working with children. You know, special education teachers, they work with uh, students with a variety of uh, disabilities. Uh, you know, special education, it does, uh, there are various streams in disability of uh, special education also. Uh, you know, it's not that you just go for one special education training and then you can deal with all different uh, kinds of disabilities. You have uh, a special education for uh, uh, teachers, for uh, students who are deaf, students who are blind, uh, students with uh, intellectual or developmental disabilities like that. So there are different uh, various streams of special education. Now, because of the increased focus in special and inclusive education, and as I've said, we have already, our state also has notified, and slowly it's going to be co become compulsory military in all the private schools and all the uh, government schools. So and we already, even now, though there are a few schools which have started inclusive education and all, but we are already facing a huge shortage. So when we start making it mandatory, then you can just imagine, you know, we will need a huge number of special education teachers, uh, you know, and, uh, you know, uh, not only special education, even general teachers who are trained, you know, in, uh, we need to be sensitized in, uh, 
uh, you know, in disability. So there's a huge uh, shortage of qualified teachers and demand is strong and it will, it is expected to grow, it will grow. And so, of course, after, you know, after your graduation, you have to go uh, complete a teacher training uh, program, either in special education or general teacher training, you know, but with a background in psychology, uh, you will have that edge to be really, really good in this profession. So this is really something that you should think about. Uh, so, so these are just some, a few of the career paths for the uh, psychology students in uh, the disability sector. And uh, there are many, many more that you can explore, of course, uh, within public and uh, private um, uh, healthcare, education, mental health support, social work, therapy and counseling and so on you know it just depends totally on your uh, personal interest so yeah so i think i've gone on uh, uh, for too long so let me just end with uh, a few words on uh, you know the theme of our uh, program today uh, embracing and uh, celebrating differences you know this embracing and celebrating differences is just another word for inclusion inclusion now people living with disabilities are you know among the most marginalized they are among the most excluded the most neglected you know disabled people they are often forgotten and left behind i've spoken about uh, a little bit about all that and they are uh, you know they re regularly face discrimination and exclusion from healthcare education work and community life you know they uh, face a lot of prejudice and um, you know injustice why it is just because they are different from what people uh, accept what is accepted as normal the idea of normal you know now people with uh, disabilities are uh, looked upon as uh, you know uh, something that is abnormal uh, a mistake a mistake that god made you know so that is why they are um, excluded excluded they are among the most excluded just because they are different from the idea of normal that society has you know so embracing and celebrating differences should not be just a slogan it should be a way of life you know something that we truly practice in our everyday lives so what is but to do that we have to understand what is disability inclusion what does it mean including people with disabilities in everyday activities and making sure that they have the same opportunities to participate in every aspect of life to the best of their abilities and desires is disability inclusion as i have already highlighted you know very briefly um, uh, this is not what is happening you know um, in the current scenario this is not happening they are not being being included you know i've already mentioned uh, about education children with uh, disabilities are not getting the same uh, opportunities to receive education like non-disabled children because of the many reasons that i have already highlighted and uh, you, and you know when we are talking about uh, disability inclusion and uh, uh, you know we are talking about people with disabilities then please remember that we are not talking about pity or charity you know many people they think about disabled people as objects of charity you know as if they are there to for people to do a good deed you know they you know, one fine day they'll go hand over uh, some uh, food items or some money and they think that they've done uh, really the re the good deed of their life you know disabled people they do not want pity they don't need pity they don't need uh, charity you know we are talking about the rights of persons with disabilities as equal citizens of the community as equal citizens of the state the country and their right to equal opportunities to get a good education a good job to get a good job a get a job good job or bad job to get a job they are not getting anything so and to lead uh, worthwhile lives and to be valued members of the society so yes of course the responsibility of the government is clear it is uh, you know the government all governments including our state government they have to do what needs to be done you know they have to make sure 
that all the laws are properly implemented. You have to make sure that facilities and social securities are put into place for persons with disabilities. However, it's not only the government, you know, government's responsibility, it's clear, but then it's not only about the government, you know, laws, because laws are not enough. It is there to guide us, but laws are not enough. It is all of us, each and every one of us, you know, the change, the change that needs to happen, you know, the change can and it must begin with each and every one of us, you know? And as I said, uh, uh, you know, we can just make this theme, you know, embracing and celebrating uh, differences, you know, a mere slogan, you know, a slogan that we forget once we, uh, once this program is over, or we can really think about um, how we can truly practice this in our everyday lives so that we can make a difference in the lives of so many people. I'll leave you with that thought. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, uh, ma'am uh, Detono. <clears throat> I believe that uh, everyone has learned. Uh, everyone has learned a lot uh, from you. And now uh, I would like to uh, raise the others. If you have any doubts or queries, uh, you can bring up your questions to her. Thank you. Yeah, if anyone has uh, any questions and uh, later on also you can, uh, uh, you know, send it to me also. And uh, yeah, we can do that also. I'm sorry, I must have taken uh, too much time also. <laughs> so anyway. Okay, let me just interrupt. All right. Thank you so much, Parang, for the, uh, your in-depth explanation on the various types of personality uh, the disabilities as well as what steps we need to take and uh, what i'm highlighting brainstorming us with what the government has been doing so far and uh, indeed ma'am it was really insightful and then it was uh, i believe that it was very helpful for all of us who are present here and since uh, are there any questions um, I think there are no questions so far. So, uh, a lot of thanks. So, I give the time to RTP. Hello. Good afternoon. Okay. Uh, yeah, you, you yeah, have so, to All right. Yeah. So, ma'am, Nuzi, okay, so I, I think there was one uh, student, but uh, I just, okay, so since uh, that student has uh, uh, muted, so I'll just uh, make a comment. I think it was uh, uh, very insightful and very enriching um, presentation, and it really brought out many important aspects, right, that uh, that is... Uh, 
in our society, right? And I especially like uh, when Mammy pointed out, you know, how it has, be, how in our society, right? In tribal society, let's take in, uh, in general. So even in societies like this, uh, it's uh, seen as a very, you know, it's even if we look at literature, right? It's seen to be an egalitarian society. All these uh, uh, literatures are there. So, but uh, the fact that you, uh, ma'am, you brought out about you know the um, stigma and all these uh, aspects was very nice, and I felt really glad about it. And how the you know in our in societies like uh, this uh, comp uh, comprised by tribal people, right? How there are certain section of uh, population who are still not represented well, right? And ma'am, uh, I'm also thankful because you have, I think, rightly pointed out, sometimes I wonder, like personally, I would also wonder if we look at the church and if we look at the majority of the population, right, in each of our communities, we hardly, I myself also hardly see people, right, with disabilities who come to these functions with wheelchairs and all this. So I think, uh, ma'am, uh, you have rightly pointed out all the important issues uh, that are prevalent here. And I think, yes, with uh, more days to come, I think we'll also be able to you know, continue this uh, form of discussion in the future. And ma'am, just one thing lastly that I would like to add uh, regarding um, this difference, uh, yeah, embracing our differences, right? So uh, ma'am, um, I have had this thought because uh, during my PhD studies, I have a friend from psychology who did her uh, research in uh, 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 this uh, people who had spinal injuries and who are using wheelchairs. So we would have lots of uh, discussions and I also have some relatives with whom I would discuss all about this. Ma'am, I think uh, it's, it's very high time, you know, that we normalize the differences. How I see is that, uh, for example, um, the limitation of one person, even as a people, right, within quotes, without disability, we, uh, every one of us like certain things, right? So if we can also just see those aspects, right, uh, aspects as, uh, um, uh, and oh, oh, okay, let me frame it in this way, for people who are uh, within quotes, not disabled, right? So we also lack certain things, but those lacking, right, those way of being disabled are not uh, seen as disabled, for, uh, disabled in itself, right? But uh, when it comes to, um, uh, when it comes to the fact that uh, having people having uh, physical disabilities and, and in sort of these discussions, right, we often, uh, it often comes with stigmatization and all these things. So I feel that, like, uh, especially, a time like this now, right? Uh, so I think it's really high time that we start normalizing, right? These different sort of uh, uh, different differences and different sort of disabilities that each and every one of us has, right? And then uh, look at them from a very uh, from the similar uh, standard, right? So that uh, and I think in this way there can be a normalization of differences, right? Of that. Uh, Okay, let me frame it this way. Normalization of difference, the differences that each and every human being has in this society, right? So, ma'am, that is just one thing that I like that. I don't know whether it was clear enough or not, but I just want to make that point. That's why. Thank you so much. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much. It's absolutely what you said. It absolutely makes sense about the normalization and, uh, you know, that is so much needed, you know, because disability is something that, uh, as I mentioned also in my presentation, it's something uh, that is seen historically, it was seen as uh, something that is wrong, you know, and then yes. in many societies, in tribal societies also, it is, mm. uh, you know, sometimes regarded as a curse, you know, uh, yes, yes. because, you know, the family, you, all, you know, committed the same sin, mm. so your child became disabled you know that yes, kind of yes. attitude and mm. this kind of mentality it still exists a lot you know yes, even in yes. our societies even now yeah, you know, slowly mm -hmm. the good thing is it is changing it is getting a little better but uh, it's still mm -hmm. there and so it becomes very 
tough to break through that uh, this thing and uh, you know that's why i you know in my uh, activism one of my tools you know the tools that i use as my wheelchair because normally you know uh, in our societies mm. elsewhere yeah, in in a place like america for example it's yes, so common yes. you know for people yes, yes. Just to be mm. roaming around doing their we own see thing everywhere yes like mm. but in our society it's something it's just so strange exactly. right yes, and yes. so you know when i go out uh, for me mm. i'm always up and about and going around and of course now with my official duties and all i'm here and there mm. i'm still mm. you know looked upon as something why is this woman in a, you know wheelchair and mm. if she's why is she not at home you know that kind of yes, thing yes. it's still mm. there you know but then the thing is we really need to make sure that mm. we are visible you know the more that we are yes, visible exactly. it becomes a normal thing you know that oh exactly. It's so fine. She's disabled. So what? That kind of attitude. So we just that disability yes. also becomes very important. Right? So the, my wheelchair is actually a very important tool in my, uh, you know, awareness campaign. And uh, thank you very much. Those are very valid points that you did. You, you brought up. Yeah. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Uh, hello ma'am. Yeah, dear, this is a question for you in the chat box. Shall I read it out? Yeah, okay. I'm trying to look yeah. at it. Okay. Uh, Is there a way we can socially with you without doing a spread? Yes. Uh, yeah, the thing is, we all have to, you know, just uh, change the way we think. It's just a difference. You know, uh, disability is... Uh, it's nothing more it's just another human experience you know and uh, so it's nothing strange it's not uh, alien it's not abnormal you know actually people talk about normal and abnormal so this idea of normal what is uh, that's what i keep on challenging people you all think that you all are normal and i'm abnormal but who is to say that I'm normal, you know, and then you are the non-disabled people are abnormal, you know. So this idea of normal, you know, we have to challenge this idea of normal and our mindset. Uh, there is absolutely we can, uh, you know, uh, discrimination. It comes because we look at someone differently, you know, because someone is different. We start uh, treating someone differently you know once we start looking at everybody as saying yeah you have a difference i uh, you're different from me i am different from you and so actually you know there's uh, many people uh, they uh, they like to use all this euphemisms also talk about uh, instead of saying disabled or disability they talk about differently abled right many people they like to use that term but people with disabilities actually uh, you know, they don't like uh, this term, this euphemism, you know, that uh, people with, uh, you know, mm, are differently able, you know, because who is not differently able? Everybody, whether you are disabled or non-disabled, everyone has got different abilities, disabilities. And so everybody is differently able. So this uh, use of differently able for disabled people is actually a very funny term. And we in the disabled uh, community, we we don't use it. We don't like it also. But it's actually non-disabled people who prefer to put all these kind of pretty, pretty words, you know, thinking as if it's going to change uh, things. You know, there's, not, there's no need to change anything. Disability is nothing to be ashamed about. It's just that is different from my disability is also different from another person with disability so everybody is different you know so once we have that in our mind you know then discrimination will not happen you know we'll just be uh, together with each other without uh, you know all these kinds of negative attitudes and thoughts towards each other and there's uh, this thing uh, another one i think i see at the top something about uh, 
curable, curable these days. Uh, it really is not about uh, disability. It's not about uh, curing or fixing. You know, that is one, uh, you know, um, mindset that is also there. You know, of course, there are some conditions that needs to be taken off, care of, and then, you know, some things that can be done to see how it can be eased or made better. So all those things. So obviously, uh, if there are some steps that can be taken, it should be taken. But disability is not about uh, something, you know, that can, that uh, needs to be fixed or cured, you know. Um, it's, as I said, it's just another human experience, you know. It, and all of us, you know, you can, everybody can, uh, you know, may perhaps uh, become uh, disabled one day if we long live long enough, you know, with old age, we get all these kinds of disabilities or temporary disabilities also you will experience. So it's just another human experience. It's not about curing or fixing, you know, for me, when people talk about all that, many people will come and pray for me also, you know, and trying to fix my disability. So I, I'm not looking to be fixed. So if you want to pray, then pray with me, you know, and then let's just pray in general, but don't pray to cure me because I don't want to be cured. Now, it's not something that if I'm looking for curing or fixing, then you can pray for that. But just don't assume that I'm looking to be fixed, you know, to looking to be cured. I tell people also. So that's it's not about curing. It's just, you know, it's just another human experience disability. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Yeah, if there's no more questions or queries, uh, can we shall we move on? Atili? Yeah. Yes, ma'am. Good afternoon, everyone. I thank you all for taking our time to attend this webinar and making it a lively session. I would like to take this opportunity to give a special appreciation to our dear ma'am. Diethono Nakro, for enlightening us with a vast knowledge and experience. It was a very insightful session. I especially liked the part where Ma'am explained that disability results because of the environment that we live in and that the negative attitude of disability is what causes disability. We were also able to realize some of the prejudices, prejudices and problems that people with disabilities face and go through. So thank you, ma'am. It was eye-opening and very informative. I would like to take, thank the Department of Psychology for taking the initiative to organize this webinar. My gratitude to the teachers present and all the students for your attendance and your time. Not to forget who were attentive and asked questions, making this session an interactive one. I thank you all for joining us today. With this, we will end the session. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, all of you. Thank you, ma'am, once again. Thank you. Thank you. I yeah. hope to come to your college once the situation gets better and meet all of you. <laughs> yes, ma'am, sure. We are looking forward, forward to that. <laughs> yes, yes, we yes, will definitely yeah. do that. Okay, thank you then. Bye-bye, yeah. everybody. Bye-bye, ma'am. Yeah, thank you. Take care. Take care.